What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another episode of the Smart Out Moments Smack Talk podcast. We are on episode number 479 or so's main event, which this week we didn't really have any other ideas. So we're going to play the game, which we haven't done in a while. I think the last one we did was in June or July or so. This is one of those rare instances where we've got a little bit of a down week. So we're going to we're gonna just kind of goof off and have some fun. I'm Tony Mango. I've got with me my usual co-hosts that are going to have fun with me. I've got Callum Wiggins. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Good old cowboy Calloway cats. <laughs> and Robert D. Felice. Ah, God, I'm so excited to be here on Supermarket Sweep. <laughs> oh, man, we are uh, We're going to play lots of games here. I'm going to debut a new game that I talked about the last time uh, called Mix and Match Up. And uh, we're going to do our other stuff here. We've done... Uh, six or so episodes of these in the past so you should be familiar with them if you've checked them out just in case you haven't by any means this is brand new to you we've got uh in no particular order just the order of what got listed down here and um we've got blind tag which is where you do like a word association kind of like lightning round you know uh in the past we've done things like you know uh who's the best wrestler of all time and it's like uh, Shawn michaels and somebody might be like alex wright and just gonna be like why did i think of him or something you know We've got tap out, which is to try to think of uh, you get the two other people are trying to go back and forth, trying to name people for something like, you know, name intercontinental champions or something. We've got Smarks choice, which gives you the Sophie's choice kind of thing. You have to pick one person out of the two to just be erased from wrestling history. Wed better dead, which is our essential uh, version of uh, marry, fuck, kill porn star or superstar. You're given a name. You got to guess which one it is because some of them really uh, are difficult to figure out. Uh, one of the ones like in the past that we've been like, you know, which one is that was um, uh, Davina Fly, which was Thea Trinidad's name in the Indies at one point. Uh, we've got Would You Rather. Most people probably know that by now. We've got Who Am I, which is who to guess. Uh, who to guess? <laughs> You're given a, a bunch of clues and you have to guess who the person is that they're talking about. A variant of that is, you know, which pay-per-view am I? There's two are truths than a lie <laughs> or two truth commissions than a lie. If you got any uh, <laughs> things about that, <laughs> it's so dumb, but I love it. And then the new one, mix and match up, uh, which I'll get to when... If we do that at some point today, well, at some point I'm going to do it, you know, but I'll explain that when we get to it. So we invite you to take part of this in however fashion you can. Obviously, you can't just do like a word association thing on the podcast the way that we are. But, you know, if you want to drop a comment below and tell us your answers to some of these things or you want to get involved in it in whatever fashion you can, then go ahead and do that just to get some plugs out of the way. What I mean by dropping a comment below is to do the best uh, thing possible, which is to interact on YouTube. And while you're over there, hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the applause button if you feel so inclined. Hit the join button as well if you want to take part of that, because that is the same thing as the Patreon. And if you go to patreon.com slash smartoutmoment, you will see all the different tiers that we have there where you can chip in on the monetary side of things. Donate a buck, ten bucks. Obviously, 10 bucks and up gives you access to the Darkcast podcast. That's why it's labeled Darkcast. Those are Patreon-exclusive episodes. So if you do the same thing on the YouTube membership side of things, you'll get access to those as well. I'll be uploading them just there uh, in the same fashion, too. And if you want something a little bit more tangible to your uh, monetary donations, then you can check out the merchandise shops on TeePublic and Redbubble. Pick up a shirt or sticker or laptop cover or whatever it might be. Lots of different products, lots of different designs you can slap on them. T Public and Redbubble have them for a smart cap moment. A Mango Tees and Fanboys Anonymous. And if you go to fanboysanonymous.com, you can check out what's happening there. I'll talk a bit more about that another time, but I don't want to bog this down too much. We're already a couple minutes in here. But uh, out of nowhere, I'm just going to give you guys a blind tag. Best gimmick match. Royal Rumble. Yeah, Royal Rumble. Yeah, it's Royal Rumble. <laughs> I mean, my, my head also full Hell in the Cell quickly there as well, but it's Royal Rumble. You know, it's funny, it's my head also said Hell in a Cell. Huh. I don't think I would have thought of Hell in a Cell. I think, if anything, I probably would have gone with something like a ladder match. I'm, I'm a ladder guy, so you'd think I'd go ladder match, but... Nah, I thought Royal Rumble off the bat and then Hell in a Cell. So we got a cowboy and we got a ladder guy? <laughs> I gotta change these uh, descriptions, below. <laughs> uh, Smark's Choice. 
You gotta pick one to go away for good, one to not, <laughs> I guess. Very good, Tony. Uh, Maria Canellis or Kelly Kelly? Um, so, like, instinctively, I wanted to say Kelly, but I think Kelly Kelly from a wrestler standpoint, probably means more than Maria, so I'll say Maria. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, they're both pretty... Yeah. Yeah. Inconsequential. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Then I'll go with Maria, because I find Maria... No, I'll go with... Um, I'll keep Maria, because I find Maria more attractive, because that's kind of the only base I can really go for, <laughs> for those. And also, she's the stuff that she did in Ring of Honor in New Japan was great as well, so... I think I, I would probably... agree that Maria's more attractive. I think... uh. I don't know. I'm kind of 50 50 on the attractive side of things. They're both obviously really good looking. So it's kind of not, it's not like uh, you're comparing, I don't know. If you're on the, the men's side of things, you're comparing like a, a Roman Reigns to a Bastion Booger or something, you know what I mean? But uh, I think overall, Maria has had more positives than Kelly Kelly. Kelly Kelly was a short stint. She was never really a great wrestler. Then neither was Maria, but Maria had like some fun character moments more, I think. I'd probably keep her. Um, let's go. Uh, let's go. Wet better dad. We were just talking about attractive type stuff. So, uh, current women's champions, we've got Io Shirai, we've got Asuka, and we've got on the uh, SmackDown side of things, Sasha Banks. I would like to go on record and say I would hate to have to kill anyone of these three. Mm. Um. So obviously I'm gonna marry Sasha. Like that's that's given. If you follow this channel at all, you just know that I'm a huge fan of Sasha. I would say bed, bed, Asuka and dead EO. But it's like uh, really hate to do that. But yeah, it's it's tough because out of the ones I've seen in terms of just. Like outside the ring personality, Asuka seems like the most fun out of the three of them. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel like that'll be the one to marry, and then bed Sasha and Kiwi, which again is like you know, there's no good loss in there. It's shame on you for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd probably agree with Callum, but that's not. Um... Yeah, that's what makes it difficult is to you to be like, oh man, you gotta you gotta kill one of them, and then it's like, well, that's the game, you know. And we're going to play the game. Triple H likes playing the game at the very least. Uh, let's see. I'll go porn star or superstar just because it's the next on my list here. Hmm. Nah, that one's too easy. Uh, uh, porn star, then. <laughs> hmm. Let's go Taylor Made. <laughs> it's, it's a dumb name, I thought. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> uh, I don't know how. I don't know if that's stupid enough. Oh, that sounds too so stupid. It has to be a wrestling name. <laughs> that's the game. It's like that's too I, I stupid. Think, yeah, but... I literally think that's too, that's too in, that's too stupid for us, the porn star to think that'd be a good name. I'm gonna go with that's a porn star name. That no is basis a... other than just like I don't. That's so stupid. It's so bad. That is a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Taylor do, Made. Do you know who that is? Is it, is it a male wrestler as well? No, female. Uh, oh, okay. Um, she retired, apparently. Uh, she was born January 12th, 1988. She's only 33 now. And she retired. Trained by Jimmy Blaze, Rough Crossing, and Scott Spade. Of I have course no idea. Was. Uh, <laughs> like she, uh, it, her list on this uh, pro wrestling dot fandom. She was a part of Three X Wrestling, Shimmer, Future Stars of Wrestling, Resistance Pro, Great Lakes Championship Wrestling, Dreamwave Wrestling, Absolute Intense Wrestling, Vendetta Pro, National Wrestling Alliance, AAW, and Shine. Uh, so at some point, I should have seen this woman. Hold on, let me look her up. I... That sounds like very big in the mid two thousands, kind of. I don't recognize her quite a bit at all. <laughs> she's kind of, she kind of like she kind of like was working from like mid to late 2000s until the early 2010s it seems like so. 
So, oh well. Looks, looks like there's... I wouldn't recognize her at all. It appears she's getting a picture next to uh, Allison Kay. There's some kind of a match with uh, Lufisto. There's April Hunter, Santana Garrett, uh, Veda Scott. I, I see her wrestling Ember Moon in this picture. Yeah, so she must have done some stuff here and there. I've never heard of Taylor Made, but that the name is a great example of how you just go, ah, well, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know. Uh, all right, I'll go with a who am I then. I'll give you guys this one. Um, this person was trained by Blackjack Mulligan, Boris Malenko, and Cesar Barraza. Is it Bracho? Nope. Is it uh I feel like I want to go with a woman. I just can't think of a woman in that Taylor like, made. <laughs> range. Um I'll skip for now. This person has a one and one MMA record. Lost by decision and win by knockout. Is it Tom Lawler? Nope. He has a much better record than one on one. Oh, well, yeah, one on one. Uh, can't be punk then. Uh, so, um, yeah, I don't have I don't have a clear enough knowledge of um MMA records to really give a, an answer on that one. So, I'll move on. This person has worked as an electrician. So about real life or gimmick? I'm not going to specify. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, oh, Bob Holly. Nope. <laughs> I mean, he oh, might have, but it's not him. <laughs> yeah, I, I just went with the sparky plug. Yeah, I know that's yeah. Right, but maybe he was an electrician. That's why he gave himself that. <laughs> I can uh, see him being an electrician at some point. Yeah. Mm. He's laid tiles Fuck. at some point for sure. I, Come on. I now. don't know. Um, <laughs> Keep going back to the Malenko thing. What Malenko thing? <laughs> trained, trained, trained by Boris by Malenko. Malenko. Oh, right. oh yeah, it was, yeah. Um, Would it help you if I said this person's first name sure. is Dean? <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, I said uh, what this person's name was. Um, a ring name that they once went by was Brett Colt. Colt. Shane Douglas? Nope. Um, it does sound like somebody who would have a cowboy type name. Adam Page? Nope. Uh, they finished fifth place in the world's strongest tag determination league. <laughs> All right, give me that. Give me that. They're team of Malenko and who else? Blackjack Mulligan. Blackjack Mulligan and Caesar Barraza. Uh, Name, I don't know. Joe Doring? Nope. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I haven't got anything. This still drawing planks at the moment. This person won the Stan Hansen Cup in 2002. Well, that must be New Japan. Is it Harper? Nope. New Japan in 2002. Uh, well, the Stan Hansen Cup could have been one of those, like, the Ted Petty Invitational kind of things from the like indie scene. It's not Nakamura, is it? Nope. It can't be Nakamura with like Mulligan and stuff like that. That was stupid. Brett, but... and Nakamura wouldn't wrestle as Brett Colt. Uh... Yeah, yeah, that'd be kind of great. <laughs> I, keep, I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting all this stuff because it's just like I'm just thinking of the most recent one. I know it must. Be, Stan Hansen Cup must be New Japan related. Lance Archer. Nope. So, if it helps, they won the Stan Hansen Cup in 2002 with Jim Steele. <laughs> oh, so that was like probably their old version of like the World Tag League or something like that. Uh, um, okay, it's probably, probably someone well, that's been like an NWA champion or something, or somebody that's worked in the NWA at the very least. I'll give you this one. They have won a title in NWA. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, Steve Carino. Adam nope. Pierce. Neither of them, nope. Uh, the, t the title that they won in NWA was the NWA World Tag Team Championship. 
Yeah, but you could. Oh, they could have won that in TNI. They could have. They could have. James Storm. Nope. Brett Colt. It's a very uh, oh. sharp kind of name, Brett Colt. It's like yeah, there's no room to like have any flowery parts to it. I feel like I've heard that name before, but I just like you can't place it. Uh, um. They won the NWA tag title. It wouldn't be like uh, Chris Harris, right? No. Nope. No. I don't know. Fuck. This person won the Raw Bowl in 1996. The Raw Bowl. Shut the fuck up. Is it Billy Gunn? Nope. It's just one of. It's... Is it Bart Gunn? It's Bart Gunn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was he was in NWA for a little while. This motherfucker! Oh, of on. course, Wait. Cowboy Cal Wiggins got it. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Just like ten minutes before we started recording, yep. I said, "You don't get any chances to bring up Dark Gun, you asshole!" Like, That's why at the beginning of this, uh. I needed to to take a couple minutes to get some notes about Mark Gundale. Oh my god! In the end of the attack team championship, there's the fucking new Midnight Express. Yeah, that's what that's what I remember it from. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I wasn't actually too far off with Bob Holly when I started. You weren't. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to get him on the next time around too. What, what? What? When you started mentioning stuff from like New Japan in the 2002 and stuff, yeah. just like, like the most innocuous stuff impossible. That's why I'm I figured I'd hurry off when I do the Who Am I. <laughs> Uh, if I end up dealing with something too easy, you guys are gonna guess it. So <laughs> you gotta go with the harder things. Okay, I, I could try one then, because this one, like, I, I don't go as difficult. I try and make it somewhat guessable earlier on. Brock um, Lesnar. <laughs> nah. All right. Um. So who am I? Um. I was born in Canada. Chris Jericho. Nope. I wasn't even born in Canada. Anyway, I was born in New York. Really? Yep. Huh. Tiger Ali Singh. <laughs> That he is Canadian as well, so that you could have gotten that. But like, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I have won uh, the award for both best match of the year and worst match of the year in the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Hmm. Jim Neidhart. No, nope. no. I, wait, he was born in Canada. Come on, damn it! <laughs> I already uh, forgot about Kenny that. Omega. No. Um, my last wrestling match took place in the 2000s. Hmm. That's 2000 wow. to 2010, right? Not like, mm -hmm. uh, 2020, still 2000. <laughs> like that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, 2000 to 2010. Uh, well, 2000, technically the last day of 2009. Yeah, 2009. Uh, hmm. Tyson Kidd. Nope. Oh, wow. I nope. rustled after that, probably. Uh, uh, d d yeah, it's Mojo. No. Come on. I'm trying to think of that. It's that Canadian is the is the trick here, but also uh, best match and worst match. Brett. No. His final match was in the 2010s. Oh, I guess that's true. Uh, I'm a former Intercontinental Champion. <laughs> Hmm. Seems too easy to go with the thing I'm thinking, but go for it. I went hard. No, it wasn't hard. Huh? Yeah. His final match was in 1999, unfortunately. Oh Chris God! Benoit. Yeah. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> no, it's not been well. <laughs> Damn it, Tony. <laughs> uh, I'm a former f former hardcore champion. Mike Austin can it? No, he was an active champion. Never mind what the fuck I said. Uh, he's part of Team Canada. Yeah, that's what. That's why I went there. Mm, hardcore champion. Blanking on Is hardcore champions now. No, it's not Lancel. Raven's not Canadian, is he? No. No. I didn't think he so. Might but... He might have been born in Canada. Is it Raven? <laughs> No, it's not right. <laughs> yeah. Raven's not actually champion. Uh, I'm a WWE Hall of Famer. It's a 
you're Hall of Famer now on top of that. Cool, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Edge? No, it's not Edge. Definitely did not take that place in the 2000s. His last final match. Oh, wait a minute, yeah. Okay. You're a Hall of Famer. God, that throws off like everybody that I can whoa, think of. Whoa, whoa, No, whoa, don't say it. Don't get... wait until my next one. Wait until your next one. Okay. You only get a chance here to do this one. Would it be a Hall of Famer? I'll, 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 I'll tell you my next one after like this one, because then you'll almost certainly get it if that's who you're thinking of. Because I think I know who you're thinking of. The hardcore champion, you said? Yes. God, every hardcore champion I can think of has had a match after that time frame or isn't Canadian or something like Tommy Dreamer or something. Um, or it's somebody who's not in the Hall of Fame, like a Maven or whatever. Uh, you said born in Canada? Yeah, born in Canada, yeah. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're considered Canadian. I highly doubt that this person's... No, you know, that person's... I, I don't know. Okay, we'll move on to the next clue. Uh, I made my wrestling debut in 1958. Pat Patterson. There we go. Damn! You know, I thought about I thought about guessing Pat Patterson at first when you said hardcore champion, and then I'm like, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't remember him having a match in, like, uh, 2000 something. Yeah, it clicked clip. as soon as I, I said uh, IC champion. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, it was a little cheeky with some of those things because my final clue would have been that he's a former uh, 24-7 champion as well. Uh, that way. <laughs> but then um, the last wrestling match took place in the 2000s because obviously his final wrestling match took place in 2000. So I was trying to throw you off a little bit with that one. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I thought if I said last place took place in 2000, that might have been a bit easier. So I decided to extend it out a little bit to make it to give you a little bit longer to yeah. try Excel. and get it. Yeah, I'm, try I'm just trying. At least I didn't say anything like, oh, won the, the gym. <laughs> oh, not the, the, the Steve. No, what's it? Stan Hansen trophy. Yeah, with Jim Steele. Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. With Jim you guys, what is Jim Steele? You guys know this random ass shit more than I do. <laughs> I don't know, Jim Steele's the guy who won the uh, San Hansen Cup with yeah, yeah, <laughs> Parker uh, in <laughs> 2002. <laughs> All right, blind tag. What's the first thing that comes into your mind when I say No Way Out? A Triple H poster. <laughs> Is he even on any of them? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't have a photographic memory of all the different No Way Out posters, unfortunately. He's on one for 2000, so I'll allow it. <laughs> uh, Eddie Guerrero. Good. What was what would yours be? In Hell in a Cell. That's, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's when he won the uh, WWE Championship. So. I'll give you guys uh, true our truths and a lie. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I've got so. a spin off. On, I've got a spin off on that as well, so we can do that one afterwards. I got a, a different spinoff other than the. Uh... Well, you, you can do your version first. You do the classic. Okay. Um. So we've been going through a lot of these music ones. And uh, let's kind of keep that going there. Um, which one of the following is not an R Truth song? Oh my God. Renegade? Hold On? Or Dance Break? Uh, I'm trying to think whether you've just put Dance Break in there because it's the Carmella thing. That they did <laughs> I'm going with it and I'm going to say Dance Break. No, I'm going to go Renegade. Renegade's the fake one. Yeah, yes. Ah. <laughs> is Dance Break literally just the, the Dance Break music? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I've never listened to any of his songs other than the ones that they've played on uh, WWE, like the um, Get Rowdy or whatever. So I had a, I decided to put a bit of a spin on it because I don't really keep up with our truths different uh, discography <laughs> or stuff like that. So uh, my two our truths and a lie is... Um, two of these people, our truth was defeated for the twenty four seven championship. One of them, he hasn't just name <laughs> the one that he hasn't uh, defeated for the title. So out of my list, I have Mojo Rawley, Jinder Mahal, and Shelton Benjamin. It's Mojo Rawley. <sighs> Damn, because all three of them have been twenty four seven champion. Yeah, I'm not, uh, being, and yeah, I'm not playing around it. <laughs> I'm going to say Shelton. 
<laughs> yeah, Shelton is the one that he hasn't beaten. That is, years. that's not possible. Shelton Edmund has absolutely been pinned by Archer. Did uh, no, just... Shelton drop it to like Cedric, I think? Yeah, I think he's dropped it to Cedric a couple of times and people like that. So. That is ridiculous. But, well, it just, just that, that shows how many people have had it. Uh, go with this one. Um, Just another one. So, have Robert Roode, Heath Slater, and Grand Metalik. Heath Slater. I want to say Metalik. Again, it, Tony's right with Metalik there. <laughs> I, I track these too much. <laughs> yeah. Heath Slater was one of the first ones he beat for it. So. The only one I know is that Arch, uh, Bobby Roode is the first person he beat for it. Yeah, because yeah. it was uh, Titus, then Rude, then Truth on the same episode. Because <laughs> Truth was like, oh man, I'll hide you, get in my car. And yeah. That's when, he, that's when it all started. He's like a 900 time champion now or something. He's at 50. Uh, no, he's 48 crazy. at the moment. 48 no, he won it twice at Royal Rumble. He also. Oh, uh, no, he... I did I saw he... it. Because I was checking his Wikipedia early today to do the thing, and that's, uh, it's, it still said 48 on that one. So. He won it back from uh, Rosenberg, Peter. too. Well, he won it once at oh, yeah. Rumble and won it back from Peter. <laughs> I don't know where. I'm just like, oh, God damn it, I got updated again because he won it from Rosenberg. <laughs> yeah, nobody's touching him as far as number of championship brands. He, uh, I like when the one of the last ones that he did, he was just like, this is my legacy. <laughs> sort of like, it's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of true. You know? So, right, I gotta, go ahead. What pay-per-view am I? Okay. All right. Uh, get ready to win, Colin. This is a new generation era that I have absolutely no idea. No, no, no. I'm going to be a little fair. You'll get it anyway, because I'm terrible at this. Big Show versus Kurt Angle. Uh, that's. I think I think I know it already. I don't oh, have the slightest wow. clue. I I, be- I believe that's Backlash 2000. No. Oh, it's not. Damn it. Uh, it might have been a different one. I think they did play Backlash 2000. Though. Vengeance 2000. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that that paper doesn't exist. <laughs> that's in my mind. <laughs> not, uh, Vengeance 2000. Okay. Um. John Cena. Versus Booker T. Oh, right. Callum, you want to take it now? Well, I know, I know what year it is. I just don't know what the event is yet. Vengeance 2001. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now I can't say the year. Now I can't, don't feel like I can guess because Tony will know the year then and I might get it wrong. Yeah. Uh, right. But I think, uh, I think, no, it's right, I can, I'll go for it. I think it's, um, oh, No Mercy 2004. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't going to get that. Because I was going to go with something really obscure like Kenzo Suzuki and Rene Dupree versus Rey Mysterio and Rob Van Dam, but then I was like, Callum will know what. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, I know that, I know that one. Yeah. Like, you could have gone through the whole card and I wouldn't have gotten it. I've never, I wasn't watching an 04, remember? <sighs> yeah. That's right. But, uh... <laughs> it's hard to pick us, up, pick us up on one of those ones like that. And I've, I've got one for you two because I know you two would both have been watching this one, or at least would have watched it either then or in retrospect. Or... It's Vengeance okay. 2000. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, first match I'll go with is uh, Bob Holly versus Al Snow. Fuck, I think I actually know it and I'm blanking on it. Um... Was that a dark match? No, it was on the card. <sighs> it was on the card. Was it... Was it King of the Ring 1998? No. Damn. Is it St. Valentine's Day Master? It is St. Valentine's Day Damn. Master. Damn! Yeah. Hey, oh. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I thought, I thought I might be able to push it to at least Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart versus D.L.O. Brown and Mark Henry before you would have gone. All right, I feel better now. Was that uh that for the Hardcore Championship? That was for the Hardcore Championship. I thought yeah. so, yeah. I distinctly remember that being the first uh, thing that I had watched at some point. I, I can't say... Can't confirm or deny whether that happened at King of the Ring 1998 as well, or whatever. It, like, it, it could have. Al Snow teamed with Head against uh, Brian Christopher and Scott Taylor. Okay, oh. there you go. I knew it was somewhere in that range, though, because I'm like, that's a hardcore title match for sure. All right, I got one more for you, and then we'll move on from this one. We can always come back. Go ahead. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. <laughs> 15 <laughs> times. I like that. Uh, I'm gonna go with um, 
Oh, greatest Royal Rumble. Yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to go with that one. That bit. I just I forgot which I forgot which sound show it was. Yeah. Yeah, I went with the Saudi show. <laughs> I figured that would at least pop you because I could say, "Oh, this match that happened ten times." Yeah, that's always the best. It's always better to have one like that way. The best ones are the ones where someone's just fought each other multiple times on the same pay per view or stuff like that. Uh, you know what? I'll I'll go along with that too. I'll give you guys one: Sheamus right. versus Alberto Del Rio. <laughs> Okay, Night so of I Champions know, yeah. 2012. Damn it, it's Night of Champions 2012. <laughs> yeah. I, knew, yeah, I knew it was 2012. It just had to be one of those ones. Yes, and I got the right one. Yeah, that was All like right. 600 pay-per-views, so uh, good job on that one. No, there's, I think there's probably only three where they've actually had one-on-one match. <laughs> so let's go with uh, this new thing, mix and match-up. We actually did a little variant of this on... It might have been like a... Maybe it was... um. Time Machine Dream Team, or maybe it was uh, Mount Rushmore or something, but we kind of did a little soft version of this in the past. The idea is you're given a tag team or a stable, and the amount of people that are in there, you've got another tag team or a stable, and you got to pick who is the blank in that kind of group. Uh, What we had done before was, if I remember correctly, it was who would be the uh, DX equivalent with the four horsewomen. So it was like, well, Charlotte Flair is the Triple H of the group. Becky Lynch is the Shawn Michaels. Sasha Banks is the, uh, I forget what we had gone, but like, whatever it was, like we did something along those lines. So that's kind of where we're going on with here. It's not uh, a concept that I've hammered out the details to a hundred percent, but it's kind of what I'm thinking. So here's my, uh, my task for you guys to try to figure out where you think this person would, that these people would match up. You got the four members of the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Roderick uh, Strong, and Kyle O'Reilly. Match them up with the four members of the Wyatt family. Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, Braun Strowman, and Bray Wyatt. There is obviously no real comparison between them, which is what kind of makes it fun. I'm going to just match them up like this, because... I'd put Red Dragon of Fish and O'Reilly as the tag team, so they would take Harper and Rowan, and then I'd put Strong as the Braun Strowman, because Strong is legitimately like the muscle of the group, which is weird because they're all pretty uh, slim and slender. But and then Adam Cole is the Bray Wyatt because he's the lead. It's exactly what I had down. Yeah, I don't really feel like you do any yeah. sort of alternative for that, yeah. unfortunately. And my uh, my one little note is uh, outside of the name kind of thing, but the name Roderick Strong is very much the Braun Strowman name of that group. Well, his his original name was going to be Braun Strongman. <laughs> Braun Strongman. Maybe uh, it was Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, and uh, Rod Strowman, <laughs> too. Right, well, I'll, I'll try one that's one that's just completely bizarre. Okay. So, okay, so we're going with Team PCB. So <laughs> Paige, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte from way back in like fifteen. <laughs> Awful name. M- match them up with the three members of the Dudley Boys: Bubba <laughs> Ray, Spike, and Devon. <laughs> Paige and Spike. Gonna... <laughs> Give me a reason for all of them as well. <laughs> I want the reason. Paige is Spike because she uh, she's gone through a lot, and Spike used to get tossed around a lot. Oh. Uh, I think you're not talking about that, Rob. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get mine out of the gutter. <laughs> um, Devon, get the tables. How can we factor that in there? Um, I mean, I know how I would, I would do that. It's up to you. You know what? Ah, man, that's tough. I can't see Charlotte being either of them. <laughs> Actually, I'll go Charlotte being the bully. She's Bully Ray in that sense. And Devon's uh Devon's kind of the cooler one. Becky's cooler. So I've got Paige as Devon, because I think that they'll both end up working for WWE and for forever. And it seems like Devon's in the producer role, and I think Paige will do the same. And, like, decently, decent in the ring. 
I'm sure this is going to get looks, but I've got Charlotte as Spike just because dependable, can do pretty much whatever you need. And Becky and Bubba are both the best on the mics. I have them matched up. That's a terrible comparison, Callum. <laughs> It's supposed to be you just have to do one like that because like oh just let's put the um, yeah, no, unscrewed error against the four you, horsemen. I wonder who's going to be in wet roll there. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with you. It's still terrible. What's your group out of that, Cal? Oh, I'd put um, Becky as Spike because like she's just her whole career was climbing up as being an underdog and stuff like that, so she fits well with Spike in that regard. Uh, Charlotte's. Bully Ray because she would be the one that's bossing the other people around and telling them to get a table set up and all this other stuff. And Paige is Devon because I think that I mean, I'm trying to think of like a real comparison other than the fact that like, she, she's the last one of it. Um, didn't they um, do some sort of um, I know uh, there was a there was like a uh, Ronda Rousey and Devon like yes. they did this really spoof trailer thing. Was Paige in that as well? I think so. Yeah. So that's their that's their link though. They were both in that they were both in that stupid uh, tables horror movie trailer. They did. I'll deal with a uh, another three kind of setup like that. Uh, you got the three members of the New Day, and the three members of the Brood. <laughs> oh, that's a good one actually. Um. All right. So in my mind. I'm trying to think which way I'm going to do it. I'd say Kofi is Edge because I know in reality he's the obviously the, the older statesman of the group, but I, in my mind he's the one that's always had the most amount of like widescreen potential in terms of like going on to be like a top star with championships and stuff like that. So Kofi would be the Edge role in that regard. I'd say... Xavier's Gangrel, because he's always been seen like more of the, the mouthpiece of the group, rather like he's the one that's more typically on the sidelines rooting them on rather than being in the ring. Obviously, that's changed a bit more recently, but that's the way that they were originally presented. And that means that Big E is Christian, because <coughs> I think he would look good in that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'm going to say I Link Kofi to Edge, because I think if we're honest with ourselves, just the potential there and how far they go. We're all going Kofi Edge then. I'm going to link Big E to Gangrel. Mm -hmm. Me because too. Because he seems like the one who will always go down as, hey, he could have done more, but I think I can see him being a trainer later on in his life. So I'll link those two together. And Xavier's Christian because... I think he exceeds all expectations at all times. I uh, I figured Woods for Christian because in the grand scheme of things, he's the one that tends to get forgotten about more, which I think is a real shame because Woods is good too. And Christian was sort of the third man in that group. Eventually ended up doing much better than Gangrel, but uh, also Gangrel is the one that's drinking the uh, the fake blood. And Big E's got the um, powder. And I can just kind of picture Big E being the one that drinks the fake blood and spits it all over the place or something, you know? Yeah, I guess there's also the link to the fact that Gangrel went on from his WWE career into a career in pornography, and Big E's got a huge package. So that's kind of the... <laughs> wow! <laughs> Old school joke. Coming back. Buy the shirt. Yeah. Buy the shirt. Oh, uh, you can't buy the shirt, actually. Oh. FedEx and UPS take it down all the time. <laughs> oh, damn. So that's I why you know, should check out those merchandise shops as soon as I put up new designs because these people will just go, no, you can't buy a Biggie's package shirt that says uh, that fucking UPS, whatever. Jerks. I didn't even know that Gangrel <laughs> did porn with his wrestling career. Well, he, 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 he directed didn't do it. the porn himself. He was the director of it, yeah. Maybe a producer, too. That I don't I can know. Believe. That I can believe. I bet he brought those uh, directorial skills to the um, Matt Hardy, what was it called? The uh, Elite Deletion match, I guess. I got one. JBL's cabinet and the Hurt Business. So who's in the uh, cabinet you're gonna again? It's, you're going to need to tell Tony what he's in the it's cabinet. It's Jillian, Orlando, JBL, 
And not Jillian. I will... not, yeah, he's going, going with a JBL. He's going with JBL Orlando Jordan and the Basham brothers. And the Basham brothers. Wasn't Jillian a part of it? No, uh, Jillian later managed JBL, but that was yeah. separate. That was afterwards. You're talking about in terms of like, the woman that was in the group. That's uh, Amy Weber. Weber. Thinking of who? Amy, Amy Weber. Weber. So she was um, a Amy former. Weber. Yeah, she she did, wasn't in with the company for very long as well. I think she also did porn. So that's probably another <laughs> thing. <laughs> I, I believe what she's most known for is Orton crapping in her back. Huh. So that's uh, the cabinet, and then who are the other ones? The herd business. Herd business. What? Well, uh, see, Polly wants to put MVP with the JBL spot because like he's the mouthpiece of the group, and JBL was the top guy of that. So, but that that obviously seems like. It's incorrect because mm-hmm. I mean I mean it works really I think I think I'll go with that one. Um, the tag team of the group is Bashams and the tag team of the Hurt Business is well at least at the moment Cedric and Charlton yeah Charlton so I'd go with that side of things and Orlando Jordan is Bobby Lashley but that's like yeah that's, that's a... just because <laughs> well, that's just because well, that's I at the time Jordan they put, steroids, like... yeah. the United States champion too. Yeah, again, yeah, not, you know, it's a champion link. And I guess at the time they thought Orlando Jordan would be a big, di- the biggest deal coming out of it, like get the rub from JBL and launch his career off the back of that. And it never got going, so which I'm is kind gonna, of like Bobby Lashley in his first run. I'm going to go the other way around and say I'll put Lashley in the JBL role because he's the main wrestler of the bunch. I will put the tag team, even though the tag team in the stages. Uh, Shelton and Cedric. I'm gonna say it's MVP and Shelton because I feel like Cedric should be the Orlando Jordan of the group and getting the rub from all these guys to go on to do great things. No, fair enough. Uh, porn star or superstar? Mandy Flores. Go guess, bro. Porn star. I. I... Feel like I feel like I've seen this name come across my screen twice. <laughs> I just can't remember how. Did you mean you come across this name on your screen before? That's like <laughs> I just hell of a match. In what context? Um, uh, I'll just go for it, she, sir. Just play it safe. She's a she's a porn star. Okay, so Callum says it with certain. I, I, re- I again, I recognize the name. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There may be uh, a wrestler out there named that, but at the very least, for this list, she is a porn star. Uh, Gangrel. It's, it's like okay. bad when you recognize, when you recognize I mean, It's bad when you recognize them and they're the porn star instead. I mean, it, it's the word human. <laughs> what about this one? Vanessa Craven. Oh. That's see, I think I recognize that name as well, but I literally don't know where from. Oh, that's so. <laughs> To come across that somewhere too. Do you, do you know, because I feel like I had last time. I think that's a wrestler. What's your uh, pet kill? I mean, I'll go porn star just be different because I don't know either way. But... She was in the Mayon Classic. Uh, okay. She was in the Mayon Classic. Doing porn. See, d- <laughs> <laughs> different kind of Mayon Classic. Yeah. <laughs> No, she, uh, who did she lose to in the May Young Classic? Uh, Vanessa Craven, May Young Classic. Has she got a different name? Yeah, that was that a name that she was given by WWE? Uh, I guess that's her real name. So she went by her real name in that too. Oh, she, she retired already. She, that's oh, yeah. Why, that's she, why I know her, because I wrote the retirement story. She that's also went by Vanessa the Mountain. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. That could just be some kind of, you know, we're not going to kink shame, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's six foot tall, apparently. Yeah. Well, that was her build height at the very least. Yeah, I remember her not being all that great in the ring. I, I, I want to throw some Mark's choice out there. Oh, yeah, we haven't, haven't done that yet. yet. Um, This one's a bit different because I do like to try and mix things up every now and again. Um, the smart choice is SummerSlam or NXT Takeovers. Mm. And that's all NXT Takeovers. SummerSlam is too iconic. Like you could always replace Takeover with something. I don't have that attachment. SummerSlam is 
far too iconic. You're getting rid of a lot of moments. That's tough. Because without TakeOver, NXT really seems like a shitty brand because they don't have any pay-per-views. They would only have a rival. Because that wasn't done to TakeOver. It's only case more about that. It's just about you'd have to just get rid of the current takeovers that have happened and stuff like that. And it'd be, and they might've been replaced by something else, like a different event, but it's also just due to the fact that you'd lose, I mean, in my mind, you just lose those matches and that atmosphere. Or, I mean, if you want to try to make the malleable timeline type of argument, you could say those matches just happen on NXT. Yeah, I'd get rid of takeover. Yeah. I've never been the biggest fan of the name takeover. So I liked it when I thought they were going to continue doing the different towns. things, you know. No, I, I don't really like the towns because oh, we're taking takeover Philly. I liked when it was like arrival and then takeover and then like as long as the context makes sense, you know. And we're not doing Unforgiven by by his Unforgiven because it's a cool name. Like I thought they would keep making sense with the names. So I'm gonna go with a tap out here. This one it might not oh, be up to, might not be up to date. I'm not too sure when that. it was sent in, but this one was sent in by Guest Five. I hate oh, doing God. this. I hate doing this against Rob. Rob's too good at this. <laughs> so uh, it's gonna to be tough for me to keep track of all the ones that's on here. So we'll go, don't we'll don't be uh, don't be like you know this person that person that person. But uh, the one that was sent in by Guest Five is. WWE World Champions, Universal Champions, or World Heavyweight Champions crowned on Raw or SmackDown. Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> a lot of qualifiers on that one. I like it. Yeah. There's I, I actually like not as many as I would think. Yeah, there's not. All right. All right. So, so it has to be someone who's crowned WWE Champion, World Heavyweight Champion, or Universal Champion on either a Raw or SmackDown show. Yeah. One okay. of those three world titles. Obviously well, not like, like Intercontinental. Or should I go? Would you like me to go first, or do you want to go first? I'll go first. Daniel Bryan. Let me, uh... Yep, Daniel Bryan. Go on. AJ Styles. AJ Styles, go on. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold. Uh, The Undertaker. Where... Maybe uh, Undertaker might not be on this list. I don't think he is. No, he was uh, 98, right? Then he went on an episode of Raw against Austin. Or did Austin now he next? loses it on an episode of Raw. Ah, oh, I got that confused. Yep, man. Undertaker's yeah. not on the list. There you go. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Damn it, I got that one around. Let's uh, see how many other ones you guys can name, though. Uh, I can, yeah, I can think of other ones. I just got that one confused. But um, uh, let, me, let me think of another one, then. Uh, Edge. Edge, I don't see on this yeah. list either. Oh, no, he is on the list. Okay. Edge won on both on Raw and on SmackDown. I know yeah. he won both. Uh, CM Punk. CM Punk is on the list. Oh, yeah, I should have just gone through all the money in the bank cashings, really. The Miz. Miz is on the list. Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger is on the list. Um, Triple H must have done at one point. Yeah, he wins yeah. his first one. Yeah, he's he's on the list. Um, Kevin Owens. Yep. Uh, Brock. Yes. Brock is. I'm not seeing Brock. SmackDown he in 2003, Brock. and also against Kofi Kingston on the first episode of SmackDown. Yeah, <laughs> so Brock so definitely did. Stuff. Actually, it might be far back, uh, far back enough that that might not be where it was. I don't remember when Guess Five had sent this in, but we know that he did on SmackDown at the very least. Nick Foley or Mankind or whatever. However you want to classify that. Yeah, Mankind. Uh, John Cena. Yep. Randy Orton. Yep. Rey Mysterio. Yep, he's <laughs> doing the John Cena Rey Mysterio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm just trying to think of uh, world champions, but I will say The Rock. Yep. Mm, I'm trying to think of how many other ones. Uh, no, not them. Hmm. 
there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more on this list. Wow. Okay. Oh, uh, Dolph Ziggler. He is one of them. Yeah, uh, Psycho Sid. He is another one. Wow. Oh, yeah. He's the okay. first person to win it on a Raw. There's your useless trivia. He's also the master in the ruler of the world. Mm, trying to think of if any ones. No, not him. Not him. Him did not mm. win. <laughs> what about who? No. <laughs> <laughs> who uh, definitely didn't win? <laughs> Vacant, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, Vacant's got, probably got quite a few of them on there. Actually, um, oh, Six people left on this list. Yeah. I'm a little, a little stuck on those, some of these ones now. I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of them are quite recent, but like, they probably just don't stick in my mind as well. Um, Roman. Roman's one. Kurt Angle. He's another. Oh, yeah, he won the world title. I've, I've, was, I, I, I dismissed, I, yeah, I dismissed Angle. Because I thought, oh, no, I just named all, all, these, all these WWE title ones. Uh, Carly. Carly, yeah. Um, and the, the final three, or at least according to this list. I'm going through all the cash ins in my mind. Actually, there's four because we're missing one. Oh, ah, um, a very recent one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, God, that sounds real recent. Yeah. Oh, Drew McIntyre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's obviously, yeah. this list was sent in before McIntyre yeah. won, so. Yeah. There are three left. I'm trying to think of, oh, a little bit just stuck in my head now about some of these ones. Because we've named most of the, the, the big ones that won it, like, time and time again, so it's really, like, be mm. odd to think about which of them. Two oh, out of the three are multi-time champions. Oh, oh yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying they aren't multiple time champions. I mean, like, won it like like Triple H. They won it like thirteen times, yeah. or whatever, and stuff like that. So, um... no, he didn't win one. Uh, well, I'm, 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 I think I'm gonna grind to a halt here. Out. So I don't want to. I don't want to have any loads of dead air and stuff like that. I'm, I already uh, lost like ages ago anyway. So I don't need that. <laughs> All right. So there's only three. I, I just want to give this a shot real quick. Um, you said Brock. Bark Gun's not one of them. <laughs> no, I know Bark Gun's not one of them. Um, Vince McMahon. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, da, da, da. All right, I'm gonna lose on this one, but Kane? Nope. So the other two were Alberto Del Rio. Oh fuck him! Oh yeah, he did. This is the cash in. I think no, that wasn't the cash in. No, he was. His one was the cash in. It wasn't the cash in though. Um, No, he wins on SmackDown against the Big Show, doesn't he? Oh yeah, that was the last Van Standing match, yeah. And um, Chris Jericho was the other one. And when did Jericho win it? Does he legitimately? Yes. He oh, beat he beat Batista, Batista for it. Yeah, in the still, yeah, in that cage match. Yeah. Wow. So that was a good, uh, good one from Guess Five there. Yeah, yeah that is good. good one. I could, I could, I could follow up with my own one because I don't have okay. to And this one, this one should be at least like even enough. And it, and it, can't, it carries a bit of a similar bit theme in terms of like being a bit out there. So NXT Championship challengers. And by this, I mean anybody who has challenged for the NXT Championship but has never won it. Okay. Now we're doing strictly the NXT Championship, not like the strictly the, N- no, strictly okay, the yeah. NXT Men's Championship. Okay, not like the UK title or no, not, okay. no UK title, no um, North American no title, title, no okay. title or anything like that. Just the main men's NXT Championship. So there are twenty nine people that have challenged for the title and have never won it. Okay. I'll start. Uh Kyle O'Reilly. Yep. Roderick Strong. Yep. Velveteen Dream. Yes. Cash Ono. Yes. Lars Sullivan. Uh 
Cowboys. Yep. Tyler Breeze. Yes. Uh, fuck. <laughs> oh, you know what? What the hell? Bobby Fish. <laughs> Nope. No, I don't believe that's that <laughs> I thought there might have been one, uh, some random episode. We can start just throwing out some other ones, really. <laughs> my, my next one was going to be Tyson Kidd. Yeah, Tyson Kidd is important. Ah, oh, damn. Uh, Eric Young. Uh, Eric Young has, yeah. Really? Who did he fight? Yeah, you, uh, uh, Alistair Black. What the hell did that happen? Uh, 2018. Hmm. That's forgettable. He'd already been moved up to he'd already been moved up to SmackDown, but uh, decided to come back for one round of episode of NXT and challenge for it. All right, honestly, I was I was gonna like call it at Eric Young because I, I knew <laughs> there was a few back there that I could yeah. say. Well, right. I can go through the whole list because just I feel like it's entertaining for some people. So the first one is Jinder Mahal. Yes, because he obviously was the guy that fought Rollins. Yeah, that's true. In that, I didn't think about that. Uh, Curtis Axel. Totally don't Corey remember Gra- that. Corey Graves. Really? Yep. Uh, Connor from The Ascension. Huh. When he was just Connor O'Brien still. Uh, Brad Maddox. Hmm. Damien nah. Sandow. Brad Maddox when? It really, really early on. Did he fight like Big E or something? Yeah, I think it was Big E, yeah. Uh, Damien Sandow. I believe that. Antonio Cesaro. Makes sense. Leo Kruger. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about Kruger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brodus Clay. Yeah, that makes sense too. Uh, we had a Tyson Kidd and Tyler Breeze ready. Hideo Itami. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bobby Roode, right? Yeah, he fought Bobby Roode, yeah. And then Roger Strong, obviously. Titus O'Neil. No. Who did he fight? Uh, I believe he fought, and, and I need to double check that, but I believe he fought um, Neville, I think. Huh. I did check, I did verify all these ones, but it, it, it was, this was, I put this together like the last time we did play the game, so it's like, yeah. I haven't had a chance to double check it since then. The only person I had, added on to it was Kyle O'Reilly, because obviously he's, that's the most recent one. Uh, Apollo Crews, who took on Finn Balor as well, I know that much. Uh, Heath Slayer. Finn Balor? Uh, yeah, he, I, yeah, I think you'll follow Chris to come Finn Balor at one point. No, I mean Heath Slater. Which, who do you think? Oh, Heath Slater took on um, Owens when Owens ah. was doing a, a raw open challenge for the NXT Championship. Oh, cool. Same <laughs> for, uh, for Zack Ryder as well. Totally forgot that that was the thing. Um, you have all these other ones here. Pete Dunne took on Adam Cole at Survivor Series. Uh, Daniel Bryan, who took on oh, Adam right. Cole and down down for the NXT yeah. Championship, yeah. Uh, Matt Riddle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Damn. Damn. That would have been an easy one. Uh, interesting name. Jordan Miles. <laughs> yeah. Akira Tozawa. Against who? Against Adam Cole. In the, um, on that uh, Evolve show. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, I, I, I did my I did my legwork here. <laughs> uh, Zach Zach Gibson. Ah, I hate him. Take a shoes yeah, off. Adam Cole at some point. Uh, Dominic Dijakovic against Keith Lee. Hmm. When he defended both the titles against him before he decided to vac- vacate one of them, and then obviously Kyle O'Reilly is the most recent one who has yet to win the championship. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was just like an interesting eclectic mix of people. There's a smart choice. I don't know why this one's written down. This is one of the first ones I wrote down, and I really don't understand where I came from. Gregory Helms or Dean Malenko? <laughs> What's the connection champion. between that? Champion. I mean, champion. I mean, yeah, champion. former former WWE Cruiserweight champions. I guess that's it. Maybe I don't know where. I'm getting rid of Helms. It's like so the fifth one that I wrote down. Apparently, <laughs> Malenko's great. I'll get rid of. Saying Hurricane isn't great. I'm saying Hurricane's great too, but I like Dean Malenko matches. <laughs> I, oh yeah, I mean, I I, I love like Dean Malenko matches; they're great. And but I guess the context of things. I mean, to consider the fact that 
in my terms of my fandom of wrestling, I wasn't a big WCW rock watcher until like like actually just retrospectively going back and watching some of it. It it actually would be worse for me in terms of like my viewing enjoyment as growing up as a kid if I got rid of the hurricane. So I'm actually gonna get rid of Malenko out of the two of them. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get rid of Malenko too, <laughs> which really sounds kinda of like uh kind of ridiculous, but for the same yeah, kind of thing. Better, he's the he, yeah, he's the better wrestler, but Hurricane was like he was he was part of my childhood. Yeah. Nah, I'll stick with Malenko. Oh, everyone here, of, um, I don't know whether we've done this one before, but I kind of just like the idea of it. Shane McMahon or Stephanie McMahon? Steph. But, I mean, get rid of Steph. Like, bye, Steph. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll keep Shane. Shane's fun. I like shit. Hmm. <laughs> I kind of like the interesting connotations of this one because essentially if you get rid of Stephanie... You're, getting rid you're of also Fox. getting you're also getting rid of Triple H being in control. Of yeah, it. I think I'd get rid of Shane. I'll take uh, Shane falling from heights over anything Stephanie does on television. I'm sorry. I would I would probably get rid of Shane because I mean his family pretty much wanted to for a different. <laughs> <family, so. laughs> oh, that's. I mean, funny. that's why they let him drop jump all those off those all those high things. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably get rid of Shane. I think even though his stuff that he did is a lot more fun than Stephanie's stuff, I think Stephanie is more important to the actual just structure of the company. I mean, she did invent women's wrestling. Exactly. Here's a wed better dead. Uh, the Colognes. <laughs> Carlito, Epico, and Primo. Down, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to marry Primo, bed uh, Carlito, and kill off Epico. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to go that exact same route. Now explain. Carlito, as we've all seen, looks phenomenal. So that's an easy choice there. I'm going to guess that Primo has been very good with his money. Because he survived for a while. I'm just like chilling and collecting WWE checks. So I'm going to marry Primo, assuming there's financial security there. And I've never been a fan of Epico. I don't know. He's invested in some Primo stocks. <laughs> there you go. Or stonks go as they are now. I'd go Carlito because he's the one that's currently working for like <laughs> Mary Carlito because he's the one that's currently working for a company that's earning like billions of dollars every year at this point. Fair so enough. so I'll go with him. Uh I guess I'll bed Primo because he was the I think in my opinion he's the better looking of the two others and obviously we're all killing Epico, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Epico. Raw deal. Um, let's see here. Let's go. Uh... Hold on. Bud Better dead. All the current men's champions. So Finn Balor, Roman Reigns, and Drew McIntyre. Surprisingly, in terms of looks, at least, this is a pretty decent pair. All three. Actually, no. I was going to say all three won the um, Sexy Superstars tournament. Roman didn't win. Yeah, I think that was one. Yeah. Balor won, I think, yeah. twice. And did McIntyre win last year? Who won last year? Uh, no, McIntyre's not won. Last year's one was um. Oh, who did win? Was that Balor again? Yeah, I think it was Balor again. Actually, did he win she three times? McIntyre in the final. Yeah. So I'll go first. Uh, Mary Roman, because first of all, financial security. Yeah, he's the head of the table. And, he provides. <laughs> and you're you're marrying into that fucking crazy family <laughs> you're gonna be a part of that family tree that's uh, utterly confusing so the you know bond villain peter might be uh somewhere in there uh, <laughs> and i'm gonna say this should be no surprise to anybody who listens to the sexy superstars tournaments over the years gonna bed drew and by process of elimination kill finn balor i gotta do the opposite Oh, you'd, you'd kill Drew and... Well, if you try and kill Drew. Yeah, well, I'd fail. <laughs> we're all going Mary Roman, because Roman's financial stability. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's just the fiscal responsible. <laughs> I mean, the only one that I wouldn't marry is Finn, because he doesn't seem to have the most... like, in agreeable personality. Like, Really? And... Isn't he, like, a sweetheart? 
Maybe, well, maybe, but it's just like all recently on like the NXT side of things, just talking about like. Yeah, you know what? Like, he oh, deserves to be. Gonna be... I'll, I'll gonna kill be the cat. Him. He's got nine lives, but I'll kill the cat. <laughs> you got yeah. some uh, some kitty litter puns in your future, though. <laughs> <laughs> It's gross. You'll have to be eating your wedding cake for a straw. <laughs> so I broke your jaw again. <laughs> Gotta eat this cake through a straw. Um, yeah, so I'm not, yeah, I'd I'm not thinking for Valor lately. <laughs> I, I'd probably, um, I'd probably, yeah, let's say marry Roman because like he's set for life, so that doesn't mean too, too much of an issue. Um, yeah, I'd bed Drew because of course I would, and um, and then uh, yeah, kill Finn Balor. Blind tag NXT. I just thought Finn Balor because we've just been talking about him. So <laughs> I thought Neville. Really? Weird. <laughs> yeah. I just thought of the logo popping towards the screen. <laughs> well, that's what happened in my brain when you said it. <laughs> oh, did you not think the roar of the crowd? Can you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, we are not NXT our kind. Bullshit. The most recent one happened. Yeah. That was actually a good thing for NXT, and then the recent one happened. And the one yeah. where they're all just walking towards the camera for a while. I just think the first all, one all is pretty good. What was the first one? Uh, the, the was the, that coheating camera where it's just the guitar going, like that slow building guitar. The doom, do do doom, do do doom, do 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 Rob should do the outros from now on because I sang with my baby tonight <laughs> on Friday. And no, I'm not doing that all the time. <laughs> We're doing the outro from now. We haven't done the outro since 2017. Well, no, what happened was I just started. He said, and Robert E. Felice, and I just went into it with my baby tonight because that's what popped into my brain. <laughs> Here's a Wed Better Dead that I had on the list that we never got around to when it was relevant the Robert Stone brand woman. So you've got Aaliyah, Mercedes Martinez, and Chelsea Green. All, no, well, not all of them. Uh, <laughs> at this point, Aaliyah's still there. Um, but Chelsea Green, gone from that. Mercedes Martinez, gone from that. Aaliyah's still around. Maybe Jesse Camilla is part of it now. I don't know. They haven't really specified that. With... I mean, I don't think after their tag team match is going to be too successful. So. Yeah. I'm going to go with Bed, Aaliyah, Wed. I'm marrying Chelsea because she puts up with Je uh, Zack Ryder's shit. So she puts up with a lot. See, but I also feel like there's probably something there where there's probably a little bit of a of a bridezilla in there, or like just like a kind of a kind of mentality. A little Van Ness in there. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I feel like that might be real. I mean, so I mean, that's the... kind of that's kind of only an issue if you leave her at the altar when you actually do marry her. That's not going to come in. <laughs> I, I think I might actually go with. Mary Mercedes, because she seems like a responsible human. She made the decision to leave retribution before everybody else did. <laughs> so, you know what? Oh, Mary Mercedes, actually, bed Chelsea, and sorry, Alia. Yeah, I'd actually go along with the same lines of that. But, and, and realistically, the reason why I'm killing Alia is because it's a bit of a mercy killing at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you've been in NXT and made no progress in about a decade. Let's just be, let's just be done with you. Let's move on. <laughs> Uh, what's one we haven't done in a little bit? We still got a little bit of time. We can do a couple more. Um, we did some blind tags. We did the top out pretty recently. Uh, blind tag, nineteen ninety-five. Camp Cornet. That's ninety-six. So that's yeah, okay. I don't know why. I just thought Mabel. Right? I just thought Mabel. Yeah, okay, you can tell me why. I was expecting Tony to go Mabel, and then Callum to go shit ratings or something like that. <laughs> It is just the absolute shit. It's just like, oh yeah, Diesel's been top. Yeah, that's terrible. Kevin Nash is great. You stop it. You you, you stop. I said it, Diesel was bad. <laughs> Here's one we didn't. Well. Uh, I forgot about. Would you rather? So here uh, is uh, a would you rather. Would you rather get Oscar's mist in your eyes, or have Carlito spit an apple in your face, and it's during COVID. <laughs> Well, they're both bad in your COVID. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to assume that Asuka is more hygienically proficient. So I'm going to go with Asuka with the mist. 
yeah, I'd, I'd probably go with Asuka's one as well. I mean, to be fair, you get in your eyes, but I guess I guess other stuff goes. I mean, I guess for the collie, I think it's an apple's healthy at the very least. I don't uh-huh. know what's in that mist, <laughs> but um, but I assume, I assume the Asuka mist thing is probably someone's kink anyway, so you probably would go with that. <laughs> Somebody out there is just like, please give me that. <laughs> please spray me in your face. <laughs> Then again, though, uh, Carlito's looking pretty good lately, so there's somebody out there who's like, please spit an apple. <laughs> Imagine if that's how someone gets, like, their five a day or something. It's like <laughs> having it spat in your face all the time. <laughs> I think I'd, uh... I mean, the the Carlito thing, like, I don't like either of these options, obviously, that's the whole point. But Asuka's missed. They act like it burns like hell. And the apple's like, ah, oh, dude... What the fuck? But the eyes are just like, ah, fuck my eyes. So, you know, I'm going to go with the, the apple because I can survive that better. <laughs> the thing I don't get about that is that it seemed to burn, like, when he, it, like, interjected in someone's eyes or face, whatever. I was going to keep it in her mouth totally fine. Yeah. She maybe it's like, like, uh, sort of like... like vinegar or something. <laughs> you know? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's just bad for your eyes. Maybe it's like bleach. Honestly, I've never understood. I've heard that they, like, it's something to do with they keep the mist and like a condom and when the time is right they just spray it and i don't i don't know how they manage to wrestle full matches with that in their mouth it's like there's certain people that there's always wrestle matches with gum yeah like, like Ziggler. Are you just chewing gum yeah or the, there's like that old school thing of people just carrying their blade in their mouth yeah fuck that like no not a chance i would be worried about the gum even I'm always worried that somebody's gonna just gonna like get it stuck in their throat or whatever. But the blade thing, I'm not putting that in my mouth for a split second, let alone wrestling a match with that. Uh uh-uh. uh. Well, for that matter, I ain't fucking blading, period. <laughs> so uh, none of this shit's happening. I'm not taking a bump. <laughs> yeah. I've had the well, offer before. We did, we, did, we did book you for this show. It's like, <laughs> you're gonna have to. Do... I'd be like, oh no, the bump is the Paul Heyman bump where I pretend to get tripped on the steps and go, uh, the card's subject to change. I'm trying to figure out if I have any other notes for true our truths and a lie, or any two uh, truth commissions and a lie. <laughs> I, I could do another one of my uh, version of it, so I'm trying, trying to figure out which ones I'm going to go with. Um, so the choices are Eric from the Viking Raiders, Riddick Moss, and Mike Canellis. Eric. Any idea, Rob? Oh, yeah. There's always one when you do these that I'm like, oh, I remember this exactly. I'm gonna go with Eric because I can't imagine our truth pitting Eric. Uh, I almost said Eric Rowan. Uh, Eric, uh, the Viking Raiders. Yeah, it, it is Eric. But yeah. Eric is a former 24 seven champion. He did get rolled up by somebody. <laughs> All right, I, I got a. These these have no real connection to them, so I'm just gonna pick a couple that I had written down. Uh, so two are truths and a lie. Um, his middle name is Aaron. He once went by the ring name K Crush, and he. Once went by the ring name Kid Quick. I'm going to say that Kid Quick is the lie. Yeah, I'd say the Kid Quick thing is the lie. I know he did cut crush, so. I don't know if his real name's Aaron, but I feel like that's yeah. the same bet. Kid Quick is the lie. Yeah. All right. You just you just tried to do like a a, a mashup of a. K quick or something. Yeah. Quick. <laughs> I had another name down as a potential one. And I'm like, that's too easy, which was K Crunch. <laughs> Does the K stand for Captain Tony? Captain Crunch, uh, what's the uh, food theory? Did a whole thing talking about how he's not really a captain or something. <laughs> that seems like your kind of content. I also like the cereal, even though it fucks up your mouth. All right. And about, uh, who am I? I'm done those in a little bit. All right. Cowboy. I'm not doing these ones anymore. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't want to be a cowboy. <laughs> I don't want to be a cowboy. 
Um, so I was born October 14th, 1979. October 14th, 1979. Not a single guess. Exactly. Um, I always Carlia. go to the date. I always try and go to the date first. No, it's not Carly. Uh, my last appearance on a WWE show was in 2019. Rob Gronkowski. No, wait. Nope. I, I, sorry, I keep thinking this is 2020. I keep getting it wrong. 19. He's definitely 19. not 41 either. So. 19. I feel like I should know this for some reason already. Fuck. With yeah, all the people that... With all the people that... uh, Finley? No, it's not Finley. Okay. Yeah. He lost a in uh, his last appearance, well, at least that I remember from TV, was uh, letting Becky Lynch get into the ring. But then again, that wasn't 2019. That wasn't 2019. Yeah. Yeah, see, I uh, thought that it could I've, be somebody like that, yeah. I've appeared in 12 wrestling video games. Oh. Chris Stratus. Nope. 12 wrestling video games. Mm-hmm. Damn, it's a lot. Yeah, it's quite uh, Sting? No. Forty-one years old. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. He's older. Uh, than that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, never mind. Uh, I had four ring names throughout my career. I'm not going to name any of them because that would give me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. Yeah, um, nothing. I used to work for WCW. No, it's not staying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's staying. Uh, I was gonna switch over from Tony Mango to Tony Schiavone and go. It's Sting. <laughs> just, uh, I uh, no, Jeff Jarrett's older than forty-one. Never mind. keep going. This is a this is stupid, but Lance Storm. No, it's not Lance Storm. Okay. Um, I have credits in twenty-one different TV shows. Damn. Hmm. WCW guy. He did TV shows. Hmm. I feel like you're throwing me off with this WCW thing. I'm I'm gonna guess it's not. I gotta go Kevin Nash. Nope. It's not a wrestler at all, and it's Terry Crews. <laughs> No, I just throw it out there. Uh, I never won a championship in WWE. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Uh, I retired in two thousand six. Ah, that's why you've thrown off a little bit of the last appearance in a WWE show in twenty nineteen. See, I do those things to to confuse. Tatanka? Nope. Damn. Oh, wait, no, he popped up on Legends Night. Shit. There's no way that he was on TV in 2019, but I'm going to say it anyway. Just incredible. No. Final, final clue, give it away. Uh, I yeah. have legs, and I know how to use them. She was on TV in 2019? She was Didn't at the, uh, she, she inducted Tori Wilson into the Hall of Fame. So, uh, I said WWE. Either. I said I said last appearance was in a WWE show. I didn't say TV. Ah, uh, okay. Or uh, the WWE show. I, I'll allow it. Stacy was in twelve seven. games. Twelve yeah. wrestling video games. One WCW game and eleven WWE games. What is she like? Was she a playable character or was she just a manager? Okay. She was mostly a playable character. Huh. Yeah. The reason she was different... in twelve, which might throw you off, because you're thinking yearly releases. Because they used to come out with like three games a year. Yeah. Four, yeah, four ring names, uh, Sky, Miss Hancock, Stacey Keebler, and Super Stacey. Huh. Uh, 21 different TV shows, including credits in How I Met Your Mother, yeah. Chuck, um, Psych, things like that. Mostly, mostly things on ABC. She seemed to have like a good relationship with ABC after she was in Dancing with the Stars. It's a shame that we didn't like try to guess it off the How I Met Your Mother thing. Yeah, I, was, I, I, I totally forgot I'd, about that. Well, so I knew I'd thrown you off completely. Winter, so I said, "Oh, WCW guy." It's like, nope, <laughs> like not a guy, girl. But you know, 
for some reason, I didn't think that she was 41. I guess it's just because she ages really well. Is it because she's got legs and that's how he is? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know where to go. That one's the final one. I'll say I dated George Clooney or, or something. Like that. <laughs> well, that would have thrown off my Kevin Nash one. <laughs> but... You did that WCW thing, and I'm like, I know that it's Terry Crews because you did that one Battle Bowl thing. <laughs> like, uh, I'm trying to think of another mix and matchup. Um, the original NWO, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall. And 3MB. McIntyre is Hogan at this point. I would say... Or is he Nash because he's the tallest? Uh, maybe, <laughs> but like I, I would put Mahal as Nash because they both have less than stellar WWE title runs. And Scott Hall as Heath Slater by default. The, the, the process of elimination. I know you should give a reason, but I got none. So I would say I'd put I'd put Heath Slater with Scott Hall because I think Scott Hall's the best mic would at, at the time was the best mic worker of the ones and I think Heath Slater was like the voice of Free MB at the very least. Uh I'd put Kevin Nash and Drew McIntyre together because they are the the t- the, the tall guys and the ones that would eventually build up once the original NWO and Free MBs go on, he'd be the one that would end up being the most successful in the company that he's working in. And then um, Hulk Hogan's gender because they both took steroids. <laughs> <laughs> oh. okay. Allegedly, by me. <laughs> See, I was at first I was thinking, well, you got the three man band and you got all the bands together, that kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, Slater's the the Hogan of the group. And then I'm like, no, you know what? Slater's the only one that didn't win a uh, world title, and Hall didn't win the world title. So I'm going uh, Heath Slater and Scott Hall. Mm. And I'm going to go McIntyre with Nash and Mahal with Hogan because Hogan and Mahal both had, uh, like, uh, location-based kind of gimmick at some point. Hogan's like the all American guy. Jinder Mahal is the modern day Maharaja. Uh, Jinder Mahal won the world title before McIntyre. Hogan won the world title before Nash. Uh, Drew McIntyre's the one who everybody keeps uh, harping on for the Sexy Superstars tournament. Kevin Nash is big sexy. Uh, you know. Who hard, so who's like, yeah, hell yeah, Jinder Mahal is sexy. Who's doing that? No, McIntyre. Oh, I guess. I think and, uh, I might have. It's the sexy one. I might have said that by accident. Um, that's where I'm going with that one. Yeah. But you know what? Let's do a two-person one because that's maybe even a little bit. Let's uh, let's try to figure out who's the Marty Jannetty because <laughs> we'll do the Rockers, Shawn Michaels, and Marty Jannetty, and uh, Brizango. Oh. Then that goes Jannetty. Tyler Breeze should have should have had a much better career and something akin to Shawn Michaels. At this point, both of them have only won that one NXT Tag Team Championship. Correct. I kind of feel like Tyler Breeze is the Genetti. Yeah, the two of them. I just think, I think Fandango is more charismatic than the two of them. Well, Fandango does have a WrestleMania win over Chris Jericho. So. Fandango also won that NXT season. And he's also this, a winner of the Sexy Superstar Tournament. That's true. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, Fandango's the Sean. All right, I got it. here. Here's a uh, blind tag because this was just announced. What comes to your mind when I say NXT Takeover Vengeance Day? What? That's yeah, what they're calling it. They're not calling it. They're not Valentine's calling it Day Massacre. Valentine's Day Massacre. No, they're calling it <sighs> NXT Takeover Vengeance Day. Vengeance With- Day. It's your fault because you just kept saying Garbage Vengeance Day. <laughs> you just kept saying Vengeance 2000. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this logo. I'm going to send it on Skype. Ugh. Vengeance it's Day. Like, it's, they're literally, it's a play on the old Vengeance logo, too. I, I hate the it. idea that it's like, oh, it's, it's, it's not Valentine's Day. It's where you the day that you get vengeance, not the day that you... Love is in the air and vengeance isn't far behind. That next you take over Val- uh, Vengeance Day will come your way on Valentine's Day on the award-winning WWE Network. <sighs> That's dumb. 
dumb. <laughs> Vengeance Day. And they I waited until talk. this week to do it. Where like I've had this up. I've had this up for weeks now, and now I have to change all my shit. So I'm like the URL is still gonna say take over 33 and whatever. Jerks. Vengeance Day. At least the logo's in a spot where I can crop it out. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it a yeah, little like bit the, easier. I, I, I like the Vengeance logo in general. It's just like a big V, so it's like fine. But I think and that's a point, just night. call it Vengeance. Like just Vengeance, just it Vengeance. Vengeance Day. It just seems... <sighs> I, I, think probably, I think it's just they, they couldn't get away with putting the word Massacre into a title. So Yeah. So that was my go-to reaction was what? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you heard me on um, while Tony was going through that. So are you fucking serious? Because I'm like, oh, cool. They finally announced Tate Mountain. And then I looked at it. <laughs> and then I was like, Ugh. come on. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, let's do uh, like maybe one of each thing and then wrap it up. Um, I'll do a, another two our truths and a lie uh, for music. Just to get that one, um, another one of those. So which one of these is not an R-Truth song? Over and over, even though, Celebration Christmas. Even though. Just because. So what's the final, the final one, Celebration Christmas? Yeah. No. Wait, the final one is Celebration Christmas or is it Celebration and Christmas? Celebration Christmas. Oh. At least that's what I've got written down. I mean, that's it. Sounds like, like I can't think of you coming up with that name. So I don't really want to not go with that one. I mean, if you haven't, kudos to it, but I'd probably go with the first one. It was the first one. <laughs> over and over is the fake one. Yeah. Celebration Xmas <laughs> is what he's got. <laughs> Oh, see, I definitely would have would have known that it was an R truth one if you said the X. Yeah, I know. That's Christmas. why I didn't say it like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh. All right. So, would you rather? Let's do one of those. Um. Would you? <laughs> what I write this one down? I wrote down. Would you rather blindly let? Uh, blindly do whatever such good shit Vince McMahon has play, uh planned for you for a full week. Or let JBL and Bob Holly bully you for a full week. <laughs> like, a full week is in seven days. Like, not talking wrestling. Just like, Richard Van comes to your door and it's like, yeah. hey, pal, I've got such good shit. I'm going with whatever Vince has planned. I'm sure I'm going to, like, skydive into a pool of money. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean. But he might want Vince... you to have some kind of an incest thing going on. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> just a character thing. Just like. It's not like like JBL and Bob Holly are gonna like fake beat you up and bully you. Like at least Vince's stuff is just like, oh, I just think this is a really great idea for Kaz. I mean, it probably is. It's just like you're just gonna lose a gauntlet match to Revel- Re- uh, to Retribution. And that's no, this is like his big idea. This is regular no, like Vince McMahon. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is the, that's such good shit. Don't eat your food uh, with your hands and stuff like you know. <laughs> This is I, I still, it, it's I, such good shit to lock you in the car and bust ass and have you throw up. You know? I mean, I'd still take that over Bob Holly and JB. Yeah, can I imagine like Vince? You're gonna be left with stories. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, Holly and JBL are just gonna be dicks. Yeah, I'm gonna pick the Vince McMahon thing too, just because uh, Bob Holly's only idea is gonna be that he beats the crap out of me. <laughs> Yeah, I got an idea. <laughs> yeah. And takes your belt. <laughs> uh, superstar uh, or porn star? Tina San Antonio. Ah, come on. That's gotta be a fucking porn star. No wrestler would call themselves that. I'm going wrestler. And you're going with a uh, porn star? Porn. Yeah. She is a wrestler. There come go. on. <laughs> she has wrestled for... That, full... Yes, I have to be a wrestler. Women superstars uncensored, which sounds like a. Well, that's, 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 well, that's basically porn. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it might be. <laughs> um, she also wrestled for Jersey All Pro Wrestling, National Wrestling Superstars, Indie Girls, spelled G U R L Z, Championship Wrestling, and American Wrestling Alliance, New Jersey. Have you had any experiences with this woman? 
Not that I know. She doesn't look familiar. <laughs> She's a part of a tag team called the Bell Saints. She won the WSU she... Tag Team Championship with Marty Bell. Would she look more familiar if she had the Brazzers logo in the bottom right? <laughs> <laughs> I think she was ranked number 38 in the 2011 PWI Top 50. Wow. Not bad. In right San Antonio. Here? Tina San Antonio. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do another Wed Better Dead. Um, do, 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 do. What do I got? Anything funny on this list? Um, I, could, I could do something. Like how the, um, the fruity classic... Blondes of the Ruthless Aggression era, Trish Stratus, Tori Wilson, and Stacey Keebler. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. How could you, how could you I, possibly kill one of them? We're going to have to. I'm going to. I'm going to have to say, marry Trish. That just seems like uh, the most secure answer. Then. Dead Tory, kill. See, it doesn't even feel right. But like, yeah, I guess. I guess. Kill I'm gonna Tori. marry Trish. Bed Stacy, and kill Tory. Just if not because she probably would want me to exercise. And I don't. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> and you don't think that Trish Stratus, the the one that you yoga instructor, runs a yoga. <laughs> Clinic is gonna... Come on, Tony. Nah. <laughs> I can't kill Stacy. And I mean, they're all gorgeous. <laughs> so it's kind of like you're losing out on that. Uh, yeah, I think I'd go in that direction. Mm. What about you, Cal? Uh, what's the question? <laughs> well, no. I can... You got to answer too. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'd probably marry Tori, uh, bed Trish, and kill Stacey. That's again all beautiful women. I, yeah, I, I, it I, I was more, feels I was more, right. Yeah, I'm I'm more of a boob guy than a leg guy. So same here, but uh, overall, I think Stacey wins out a little bit for me. Um, also she's taller than me, and that'd be that'd be intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's Mark's choice. You gotta pick one to go. Randy Savage or Sandy Ravage <laughs> or Edge. <laughs> you got that one on Rob, really. Uh. Uh, so this is just for me to be miserable. I understand. That's that's fucking. I don't know my answer for that one either. That's tough. They're but two of my favorites. So. It's like realistically, from a from a personal standpoint, in my own fandom, I would say get rid of Savage. But from an overall standpoint, I would say get rid of Edge. I think I gotta get rid of Edge. Uh, yeah, from an overall standpoint, I have to get rid of Edge. Mm. I mean, realistically, the one of them's had a bigger impact and just pop culture in general yeah so in which case you probably would have to get rid of edge but just personally i would get rid of savage just because i i'm less in get, was less like involved with him growing up and stuff like that and edge is such a big deal nowadays i mean imagine I like if edge was around nowadays have... it would have nobody i i also like that we have the same answers of yeah overall you have to go with savage but personally it's edge uh, what's the first thing you think of when I say Mickey James? I started just playing her music, uh, playing the, her theme music in my head. <laughs> um, I thought of Nick Aldis. <laughs> How lucky he was. <laughs> he, he, I mean, he's, he's a lot luckier than me, I'll tell you that much. I saw the name written down, and the first thing that popped in my mind was when she's in the ring and she does the hair flip. Or at least she used to. Uh, um, what's uh, the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the word turnbuckle? I thought of Dusty Rhodes. I thought we exposed. 
Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> I thought of a referee putting the turnbuckle back on after it had been exposed. Yeah. Finish this sentence. Going like, um, that's um, oh, George Animal Steel ripping it up and stuff yeah. like that. That would have been good. Finish this sentence. Your winner and the new Intercontinental Champion is... Razor Miz. Man. What did you say, Carol? Miz. Miz, huh. I thought well, Jeff Jarrett. The thing of like, the most recent years. Uh, worst ring attire. Oh, I had, to, I, had, I had the attire in mind. I can't remember who wore it. It's like this, like... Like this pink flowery girl with streamers down the side of it and stuff like that. I can't remember what, who was wearing that sort of thing, but I can't. Like that was the sign that I picture in mind, but I'm trying to think of one that's more. Oh, Mabel. Nah, it's not fair. Well, if the if the if the romper suit fits, it's good. Kind of... <laughs> uh, I thought of. Uh, uh, I'll say Goldberg from the Rumble, just because I don't like change. I, I had thought of Natty from the Rumble. <laughs> I'm not a fan of what Natty wore. And uh, one more blind tag, I think. Uh, maybe round that out here. Um, so, uh, you know what? We haven't done this as an idea. I'm going to give you a scenario. Uh, you got a wrestler who hits another wrestler over the head with a microphone. Who hits who? Um, Kenny Omega hits Joe Moxley and becomes the AEW World Champion. <laughs> I thought Mr. Kennedy hits Jeff Hardy. I thought Jericho hits Miz, and I don't even know if that happened. They would be around the microphone. Yeah. yeah they very much were in around the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well then that's, uh, that's a good roundup here of this uh, Play the Game. Still not over that fart gun thing. For that <laughs> fucking... You just upset that he actually lost. He actually lost one of these things. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Especially since it was pretty obvious that I was doing the fart gun thing at that time. I'm like, oh, hold on a second. Let me figure out some notes for things. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't come up with your own one, so I could beat Tony or something. <laughs> well, I I gave you No Mercy 2004. Oh yeah, you did give me that one. Yeah. It's nice, it's nice to win things every now and again on this. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, you know, again, drop your comments below. Tell us your thoughts on these different games and which things you like the best. Maybe if you've got a preference of which ones you'd like more of the other ones, you know, we could do more of any one of them in particular or something. If you're like, oh, I really like that you guys do the, the who am I or, you know, whatever it might be, then we'll do more of them in the future. But also I, pretty much every single time that we've done this, I've added a new game. We're at a point now where we've got nine games, I think. <laughs> so I don't know if there's really going to ever be any more. But if you do have any other ideas of games in mind that we could do, then that's something to keep in mind too. Drop them in the comments below. I have thought about incorporating the um, Sporkle quizzes into this and doing maybe a live edition of Play the Game where we can do something with like uh, the chat can get involved and do like, all right, everybody in the chat, your blind tag is whatever, like that kind of thing. So maybe we'll do that at some point. And maybe we'll do like the the overlay on the screen like we've done with a tier list where I can actually show the screen and we could all try to do like some Sporkle quiz stuff or something in the future. Any ideas, though, toss them my way. We'll keep them in consideration. And I've plugged quite a bit of stuff right now. I didn't really talk too much about Fanboys Anonymous, but if you go to fanboysanonymous.com, you will see everything that's happening on the geek culture spectrum over there. That is the stuff where you'll find movie reviews, TV show content, comic book discussion, video game stuff, anything on that whole kind of not wrestling side of things you'll find on that website, including our James Bond retro series that we're doing right now. Every Friday, they're being released, and we've done, at least we've recorded at this point all the way through You Only Live Twice. Yeah, that is going to come out around the end of February so the next episode you guys can hear is going to be from Russia with Love. Go back and check out episode 00 and episode 001 for Dr. No. Stay tuned for From Russia with Love, of course. Check out everything else that's happening outside of A Review to a Kill because we are also doing other stuff. We did the Milan thing. We've done a... Uh, we did a watch-along of 
Superman, Batman, Public Enemy, where I get mind fucked <laughs> at the similarities between Lex Luthor and Donald Trump. So yeah. Enjoy so, that. yeah, completely throws you off for the whole rest of the movie. <laughs> I was like, I don't like this. this is real. <laughs> check that out over there i've got stuff on e-wrestling news at stuff on uh bleacher report as well you can follow me at tony mango you can follow these guys on social media and find out what they are doing because they are doing stuff as well callum tell them what's coming up next actually what's coming up after the hot tags (laughs) yeah of the the hot tags uh on saturday will be your regular edition of the paul hammond's back down podcast which is coming very soon to a close i think we've only got a few episodes left to go the one that will be coming up next is episode 33 where we'll be talking about a ww tag team championship match between los guerreros and team angle a main event match between kurt angle and chris benoit uh, a bunch of other matches surrounding that as well and also a segment where Undertaker tries to find out what's inside a giant wooden crate so, anybody who comes yeah. out of boxes box is over <laughs> yeah. it's a guy who's um, a, a, spo- a hint exactly for if you haven't actually seen it before, the person who's inside the box is very very relevant in today's uh, WWE landscape but that's the only thing that I'll give for that side of things but, yep, yeah, you can check out that episode. Check out all the special edition ones we've got on the Patreon if you're at the $10 tier or above. You can check out all of our pay-per-view reviews. And the most, the one that's coming up soon will be for No Way Out 2003, which features Rock against Hulk Hogan, Steve Austin versus Eric Bischoff, uh, Triple H versus Scott Steiner, the rematch of all rematches. And, <laughs> yeah, check out all that stuff. Uh just uh, read all the articles on smartcomember.com, including the power rankings that I put up every single week. And follow me on Twitter at weekmaster 14 Yeah, and you can follow me on Twitter at Dude Fleece. Check out everything I got going on over at Fightful.com. I'm sure none of the wonderful listeners of Smartcat Moment would do this. But if Sean breaks an exclusive on Patreon, don't be a dick and just tweet it out and hurt Fightful. That's not cool. Don't do that. Um, check out everything that these guys previously mentioned because I'm on all of it and thank you for your continued support thank you very much for your support everybody thank you for listening to this edition hopefully you enjoyed it quite a bit I know I enjoyed bringing it to you and I am hoping that the next couple episodes well I'm hoping that all the episodes are going to be ones that everybody enjoys as well Hot tags. I don't know what we're going to be talking about yet we're going to talk uh, at the very least about Lars Sullivan being released And if anything happens on NXT tonight, maybe we'll talk a little bit more about Vengeance Day and that name. Maybe we'll talk about some updates to the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic tonight. Maybe we'll talk about Beach Break. That's happening tonight, right? Yeah, there's a wedding. Yeah, so Mazel Tov. And uh, anything else that's happening, we'll round that out on Friday. Next week, the game plan, at the very least right now, I mean, who knows how things change, is that we're going to get into our uh, predictions for NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day. And even though they haven't announced Elimination Chamber yet, I'm assuming that Elimination Chamber comes the week after that. If that's the case, then Elimination Chamber predictions. And then that means somewhere along the way there, we'll do a call the spot on at least the website. Maybe we'll do one on the podcast side of things, maybe a part of like the dark cast or something. We'll start rolling along into the end of February, get into AEW Revolution eventually go into fast lane and then we're firmly in the road to wrestlemania but march also brings with it the smart madness tournament and even though it's only the third of february i gotta start planning that out a little bit here so if you have any ideas of what you would like to see us do for the smart madness tournament this year i don't have any topics in mind that i feel like we gotta do we have a couple ideas we could do like managers entrance themes one of them, what was discussed before, was best pay per view names. Um, yeah, it's lots of variety. So, well, Vengeance Day's one that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's that's got to be on the list, right? That's like a top tier, you know, number three seed or something. Uh, you know, any ideas or suggestions you have for that, drop them in the comments below as well. Shoot the shit with us, have fun, and stay safe. And we'll talk to you next time, everybody. But for now, this has been another Smart Out moment, and we're being counted out. Oh!